Good evening. This is All India Radio. I am Valsa Williams and with me is Manoj Singh Rana with the evening news. The headlines. Both houses of parliament adjourned for the day following protest by opposition over Pegasus snooping, farm laws and other issues. government says number of farmers benefited by government procurement at msp rises over 2 crore in 2020-21 center to implement deep ocean mission at a total budget of 4077 crore rupees for 5 years more than 47 crore 85 lakh covid-19 vaccine doses administered so far under nationwide vaccination drive national recovery rate stands at 97.38% Uttar Pradesh creates record by administering more than 22 lakh doses of COVID-19 vaccine in single day. Road Transport Minister Nitin Gadkari calls for quick rollout of flex fuel vehicles capable of running on 100% ethanol and gasoline in automobile sector. Delhi High Court dismisses petition to stop use of electronic voting machines. Maharashtra government announces relief package of 11500 crore rupees to rehabilitate flood victims. Sports minister Anurag Thakur launches a theme song for Tokyo Paralympics and in Tokyo Olympics Australia defeat Germany 3-1 in semi-final Indian women's hockey team to take on Argentina tomorrow. As the nationwide free COVID-19 vaccination campaign at government facilities for those above 18 years is going on, we advise our young listeners to get vaccinated and also help others get vaccinated. We also advise our listeners not to do their guard as COVID-19 remains a threat to our health. Please stay at home unless it is essential to go out and continue to follow these three simple steps. Wear a face mask, maintain 2 gaz ki duri for social distancing, focus on hand and face hygiene. For any COVID related information and guidance, contact national helpline numbers 011-2397-8046 and 1075. And now the news. The Pegasus snooping farm laws and other issues continue to mar the proceedings of both houses of parliament both Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha were adjourned for the day following continuous protest by the opposition parties in the Lok Sabha when the house resumed at 4 pm after the third adjournment amid din the house passed the tribunal's reforms bill 2021 without any discussion as rakesh prevailed the house was adjourned for the day In the post lunch session the essential defense services bill 2021 was also passed without any discussion in the rajya sabha when the house reassembled after the second adjournment at 2 pm amid ruckus the house passed the insolvency and bankruptcy code amendment bill 2021 after a brief discussion during the passage of the bill the house witnessed heated arguments between the treasury bench and opposition members The presiding officer repeatedly asked for order in the house and warned action but the opposition members did not pay heed and later the house was adjourned for the day. Earlier amid noisy scenes deputy chairman Harivansh tried to run the question hour in the morning when the house met for the day chairman M Venkaiah Naidu rejected the adjournment notices given by the members from the Congress TMC left SP BSP and others over Pegasus snooping farm laws and other issues following this the opposition members trooped into the well raising slogans members from DMK RJD NCP Shiv Sena BSP and others were on their feet amid ruckus union minister Mukhtar Abbas Naqvi referred to a tweet by TMC MP Derek O'Brien over the passage of bills in the din and accused him of insulting parliament and demanded his apology Parliamentary Affairs Minister Prahlad Joshi also echoed the same views and objected to the TMC MP's remarks as opposition members continued with their protest the chairman expressed displeasure over the disruption saying people are watching them he also said that nobody can dictate the chair Agriculture Minister Narendra Singh Tomar said procurement at the minimum support price MSP by central and state agencies and above the MSP by private players is beneficial to the farmers. 
Replying to a question in the Lok Sabha, the minister said, in over three years, the number of farmers benefited from government procurement and the MSP rose from 1 crore 71 lakh 50 thousand in 2018-19 to 2 crore 10 lakh 7 thousand in 2020-21. Mr. Thomas said every year the government announces the MSP for 22 major agricultural commodities. He also informed that the government also extends remunerative prices to farmers through various interventions. He added that the farmers are free to sell their produce anywhere other than the government agencies. The Lok Sabha today passed the Tribunal's Reforms Bill 2021 without any discussion. The bill seeks to dissolve certain existing appellate bodies and transfer their functions to other existing judicial bodies. The bill replaces a similar ordinance promulgated in April this year. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman moved the bill for consideration and passage. Congress leader Adhir Ranjan Choudhury objected to the bill, saying the legislation is an encroachment into the judiciary. RSP MP N.K. Premachandran questioned the passage of the legislation without any discussion, as this involves amendments in 25 existing acts. A total of 2,80,000 electric vehicles were sold in the country under Phase 2 of the faster adoption and manufacturing of hybrid and electric vehicles, FAME, in the last two years. This information was given in a written reply to a question in the Lok Sabha today by Minister of State for Heavy Industries, Krishan Pal Gujar. Starting from 2019, the program is being implemented for five years with a budgetary support of 10,000 crore rupees. The minister said FAME India focuses supporting electrification of public and shared transportation with over 7,000 e-buses, 5 lakh e-3 wheelers, 55,000 e-4 wheeler passenger cars and 10 lakh e-2 wheelers. The Ministry of Road Transport and Highways has issued a notification to exempt battery-operated vehicles from the payment of fees for the purpose of issue or renewal of registration certificate and assignment of new registration mark. The Ministry said this has been notified to encourage e-mobility. The government will implement the Deep Ocean Mission at a total budget of over 4,077 crore rupees for five years. All the components of the mission will commence in 2021. This information was given in a written reply in the Rajya Sabha today by Earth Sciences Minister Dr. Jitendra Singh. The minister said a manned submersible will be developed carrying three people to a depth of 6,000 meters in the ocean for exploration of deep sea mineral resources and marine biodiversity. The India Meteorological Department has undertaken installation of agro-automatic weather stations to provide exact weather forecast to the people, especially the farmers. Giving this information in written reply in the Rajya Sabha today, Science and Technology Minister Dr. Jitendra Singh said the installation was done at district agromet units located in the Krishi Vigyan Kendras under the Indian Council of Agricultural Research Network. The minister said, at present, over 43 million farmers in the country receive the agromet advisories through SMS directly. The Minister of State for Finance, Dr. Bhagwat Karad, has said the government has taken to facilitate the renewal, renewal of life, motor and health insurance policies during the COVID-19 pandemic. In a written reply to the Rajya Sabha today, he said that lapsed policies can be revived within three or five years from the date of first unpaid premium by paying the arrears of premium with interest and subject to health declaration and medical requirements as the case may be. Parliament has passed the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code Amendment Bill 2021 with the Rajya Sabha approving it today amidst DIN. The Lok Sabha has already passed the bill. The bill is to amend the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code 2016. Insolvency is a situation where individuals or companies are unable to repay their outstanding debt. The Code provides a time-bound process for resolving the insolvency of corporate debtors. The bill introduces an alternate insolvency resolution process for micro, small and medium enterprises, MSMEs, called the Pre-Packaged Insolvency Resolution Process, PIRP. Application for initiating PIRP may be filed in the event of a default of at least 1 lakh rupees. The central government may increase the threshold of minimum default up to 1 crore rupees through a notification. Speaking on the bill, Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman highlighted its importance and said the legislation will benefit 
the MSME sector. The government has launched a nationwide campaign for distribution of Ayush 64 and Kabasura Kudinir through research councils and national institute under the Ministry of Ayush. Informing this through a written reply in the Rajya Sabha, the Minister for Ayush, Sarban and the Sonowal said a three-month campaign on Ayush for immunity was held in which more than 50,000 people had participated. The minister appealed to the states and union territories to popularize the use of Kabasur Kodinid and Ayush 64 to the asymptomatic mild to moderate COVID-19 patients at isolation centers, COVID care centers and hospitals. The ministry said 30,887 patients recovered from COVID-19 during the last 24 hours and the national recovery rate has reached 97.38%. Till now, more than 3 crore 8 lakh people have recovered from COVID-19. The country has reported 30,549 new cases in last 24 hours. The Health Ministry today said over 47 crore 85 lakh doses of COVID-19 vaccine have been administered so far in the country. Briefing the media in New Delhi this evening, Joint Secretary in the Ministry, Love Agrawal, said the total number of vaccine doses administered in July 2021 is more than double of that in May 2021. He said India's active caseload declined to nearly 4 lakh cases since the highest reported peak of 37.45 lakh active cases on the 10th of May. The Joint Secretary said 18 districts in the country are reporting an increasing trend in the daily new COVID-19 cases in the last four weeks and these districts account for 47.5% of the total cases. He said 10 districts of Kerala, 3 districts of Maharashtra, 2 districts of Manipur and 1 district each in Arunachal Pradesh, Meghalaya and Mizoram are reporting an increasing trend. Mr. Agrawal said it has been noted that COVID-19 cases being reported from a limited trajectory or area and 49.85% of the total cases in the last week was reported from Kerala. Cases are reported in the country, but they are from limited trajectory, limited areas. If we look at the total cases in the last week, then around 49.85% of the total cases were reported in the last week. And with that, the cases of the trajectory are limited in the area. Like in the week ending 1st June, 279 districts were in the week ending 1st June, where 100 cases came from, 1st July, there were 107 districts. And now, this is the number of only 50 57 districts रह गई है तो यानी कि 222 जिलों में केसेस में कमी नोट की गई है उत्तर प्रदेश created a record by administering more than 22 lakh doses of covid vaccine in a single day today the state achieved this target in a mega vaccination drive which was launched today and the numbers are still counting with this Uttar Pradesh also became the first state in the country to administer more than 5 crore COVID vaccines. Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath congratulated the people of the state for the achievement and thanked the central government for the support in this mega vaccination drive. He said COVID vaccination is only security cover for the infection and everyone must take it. Additional Chief Secretary Health Amit Mohan Prasad said that cluster approach for the vaccination drive has resulted in the high numbers of vaccination. The Assam government has lifted the round-the-clock curfew and withdrew on total containment zones across the state following a decline in the number of COVID-19 cases and positivity rate. The Assam State Disaster Management Authority has issued a revised directive today for rural and urban areas which will come into force from 5 a.m. tomorrow and will continue until further orders. You're listening to the evening news on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Both houses of parliament adjourned for the day following protests by opposition over Pegasus snooping, farm laws and other issues. Guffman says number of farmers benefited by Guffman procurement at MSP rises over 2 crore in 2020-21. Centre to implement deep ocean mission at a total budget of 4,077 crore rupees for five years. More than 47 crore 85 lakh COVID-19 vaccine doses administered so far under nationwide vaccination drive. National recovery rate stands at 97.38%. Uttar Pradesh creates a record by administering more than 22 lakh doses of COVID-19 vaccine in a single day. 
Road Transport Minister Nitin Gadkari calls for a quick rollout of flex fuel vehicles capable of running on 100% ethanol and gasoline in automobile sector. Delhi High Court dismisses petition to stop use of electronic voting machines. Maharashtra government announces relief package of 11,500 crore rupees to rehabilitate flood victims. Sports Minister Anurag Thakur launches theme song for Tokyo Paralympics. And in Tokyo Olympics, Australia defeats Germany 3-1 in semi-final. Indian women's hockey team to take on Argentina tomorrow. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. Welcome back to the evening news. Road Transport Minister Nitin Gadkari has called for a quick rollout of flex fuel vehicles capable of running on 100% ethanol and gasoline in Indian automobile sector. Mr. Gadkari today met a delegation of CEOs from Society of India Automobile Manufacturers. He congratulated the automobile manufacturers for their performance in the vehicle engineering sector. He appeals to private vehicle manufacturers to compulsorily provide a minimum of six airbags across all variants and segments of the vehicle for the safety of passengers. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. J. Shankar has said that India's presidency of BRICS is underpinned by four pillars, reform of the multilateral system, counter-terrorism cooperation, technological and digital solutions for sustainable development goals, and enhancing people-to-people cooperation. Addressing the inaugural session of BRICS Academic Forum through video conferencing, Dr. Jay Shankar said these pillars may seem abstract or even perennial, but each one of them actually has an explicit real-world meaning. He said BRICS is a statement of global rebalancing that underlines its essential diversity and pluralism. The minister said an updating and recalibration of the post-World War II multilateral architecture cannot be postponed any further. He said the pandemic and the normative breakdown in its wake have rudely reminded us that institutions built to tackle problems of the 1940s desperately need to be upgraded and made fit for the purpose of our century. Dr. Jay Shankar said an expansion of the permanent membership of the Security Council is a necessary ingredient. The External Affairs Minister said terrorism thrives in some of these gaps and its nursery lies in conflict-ridden spaces made fertile for radicalization by malign players, including states. The transition in Afghanistan that we are seeing today and the warfare that has yet again been forced upon its people has sharpened this challenge. Left unattended, its edge will be deeply felt, not just in Afghanistan's neighborhood, but well beyond. Law and Justice Minister Kiran Rijiju will attend the 8th meeting of Ministers of Justice of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization on the 6th of this month. He will be joined by Minister of State for Law and Justice, Professor S.P. Singh Baghel. During the meeting, Member States will further deliberate on areas of cooperation, the role of coronavirus laws in the pandemic, providing free legal aid to citizens in accordance with national legislation, role of Ministries of Justice in countering corruption and other allied areas of cooperation and assistance in legal services. A joint statement following the meeting will be signed. The Ministers of Law and Justice and senior officials, experts from the Ministries of Law and Justice of India, Kazakhstan, China, Kyrgyz Republic, Pakistan, Russian Federation, Tajikistan and Uzbekistan will be participating in the meeting. The Delhi High Court dismissed today a petition seeking direction to the Election Commission of India, ECI, to stop the use of the electronic voting machines, EVM, and instead return to ballot paper. A bench of Chief Justice D.N. Patel and Justice Jyoti Singh rejected the petition filed by Advocate C.R. Jaya Sukin, slapping a fine of 10,000 rupees saying it was akin to publicity interest litigation. The bench said that the petition was filed without doing any research on the working of the EVMs 
and lacked material to justify the plea. It said the EVMs were approved by the ECI and Parliament. Defence Secretary Dr. Ajay Kumar today launched a website on the 75th Independence Day celebrations 2021, India NI. DC 2021.mod.gov.in in New Delhi. It is a platform to connect Indians from world over to celebrate the national festival. The platform is freely accessible to all and provides updates and information regarding activities centered around the Independence Day celebrations 2021. It encompasses the entire Indian diaspora as if they were a part of the celebrations in person. The Defence Ministry said it is an attempt to engage people of all ages, especially the youth. For the first time ever, the platform will live stream the Independence Day celebrations from the Majestic Red Fort on the 15th of this month in a virtual reality 360 degree format. People can use this feature with or without VR gadget. The Prime Minister Narendra Modi has congratulated the students who have successfully passed the CBSE Class 10th examinations. In a tweet, Mr. Modi conveyed his best wishes to the students for their future endeavours. The Maharashtra State Board of Secondary and Higher Secondary Education declared Class 12 results. Out of the 12 lakh students, 99.63% have passed. This is the highest ever passing percentage in the State Board. The result was declared via a media briefing. The link to download Mark's memo are available from 4 p.m. at official websites maha maha ssc board dot maharashtra dot gov dot in ma result dot nic dot in hsc result dot mkcl dot org. Observing a decline in the number of COVID-19 cases, the Andaman and Nicobar administration has decided to reopen all tourist activities in South Andaman and North and Middle Andaman district with effects from today itself. All beaches, water sports activities, boat ride, museums, light and sound show, etc. will be open subject to fulfilling of the issued SOPs. The decision will bring a smile to large number of faces in the islands who desperately awaited for opening of tourism activities in the islands. In the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir, an army chopper crashed near Ranjit Sagar Dam in Basholi area of Katwa district today. A helicopter of 254 Army Aviation Squadron that took off from Mamun Cantonment in Batan Court crashed at around 11 a.m. in the Ranjit Sagar Dam in Katwa district. As per the reports, the chopper had taken off with two pilots and was on routine patrolling in the area. SSP Katwa Ramesh Kotwal, who is supervising the rescue operation, confirmed the crash and said an NDRF team has been deployed to carry out search and rescue operations while SDRF teams have also reached the spot. More details are awaited. Sports Minister Anurag Thakur today launched the theme song for Tokyo Paralympics in New Delhi. <laughs> Speaking on the occasion, Mr. Thakur said Indian para-athletes have performed consistently in the international para-sports competitions and brought laurels for the country. He hoped that Indian para-athletes would shine in the Tokyo Paralympics. The sports minister said biggest ever Indian contingent of 54 para-athletes will participate in the Tokyo Paralympics in nine disciplines and they will give their optimum best. He asked the participating athletes not to take any pressure, be mentally strong and play freely. Mr. Thakur said India will be watching them, will follow their incredible journey and 130 crore Indians will cheer for them. फ्री माइंड के साथ खेलें क्योंकि अंतरराष्ट्रीय स्तर पर खेल की परिस्थिति में आप मेंटली कितने टफ हो कितने स्ट्रांग हो बहुत महत्वपूर्ण रखता है आपका ये जो कंटिंजेंट यहां पर जा रहा है मैं यही कहूंगा आज तक अगर सबसे बड़ा था है तो पहले वाले से ज्यादा भी आप मेडल जीत कर लाएंगे the sports minister said Prime Minister Narendra Modi had met the Rio 2016 Paralympic Games athletes. He said Mr. Modi always has shown keen interest for the welfare of the athletes and focused the government's approach on nurturing talent along with development of sports infrastructure across the country. 
जुनून और जज्बा आज सर्वोच्च स्तर पर है ये आत्मविश्वास तब आता है जब सही टैलेंट की पहचान होती है उसको प्रोत्साहन मिलता है ये आत्मविश्वास तब आता है जब व्यवस्थाएं बदलती हैं ट्रांसपेरेंट होती है ये नया आत्मविश्वास न्यू इंडिया की पहचान बन रहा है द सॉन्ग कर दे कमाल टू इज कम्पोज एंड संग बाय दिव्यांग क्रिकेट प्लेयर संजीव सिंह फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर निर्मला सीतारामन स्पोर्ट्स मिनिस्टर अनुराग सिंह ठाकुर कल्चर मिनिस्टर जी किशन रेड्डी एंड मिनिस्टर स्टेट फॉर स्पोर्ट्स निशित प्रमाणिक टुडे फेलिसिटेटेड टोक्यो ओलंपिक्स ब्रॉन्ज मेडलिस्ट पी वी सिंधु एंड अ कोच पार्क ताय सैंग एट एन इवेंट इन न्यू डेली आंध्र प्रदेश चीफ मिनिस्टर वाई एस जगनमोहन रेड्डी हैज डिरेक्टेड द ऑफिशियल्स टू एक्सटेंड द कैश अवार्ड टू तेलुगु तेजम एंड एश शटलर पी वी सिंधु फॉर विनिंग अ ब्रॉन्ज मेडल इन टोक्यो ओलंपिक्स एज पर द स्टेट स्पोर्ट्स पॉलिसी The battle lines have been drawn between Belgium and Australia for a summit clash in the men's hockey at the Tokyo Olympic Games. On the 11th day today, Australia defeated Germany 3-1 in the semi-final match this evening. With this win, Australia reached in the final summit after 17 years. Earlier, India lost to Belgium 5-2 in the first semi-final this morning. The final match in the men's hockey between Belgium and Australia will be played on Thursday to decide the gold and silver honors. while india will meet germany for the bronze medal on the same day india has reached in the medal round after four decades following moscow olympics in athletics anurani failed to qualify for the javelin throw event kamalpreet kaur's medal quest ended as she finished 6th in the round of discus throw event yesterday in shot put tejinder singh tour could not qualify and stood at 13th place In wrestling Sona Malik lost to Bolortuya Kurelku of Mongolia in the women 62 kg freestyle category. Indian boxer Lavlina Borgohai has already ensured a medal for the country by storming into semi-finals in welterweight category. She'll take on B Sumer Neli of Turkey tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. Indian wrestlers will be seen in action tomorrow in their respective categories in men's freestyle 86 kg category Deepak Punia will take on Eric Krim Agiomor of Nigeria while Ravi Kumar Dahiya will meet Oscar Tigros of Colombia in 57 kg category The Maharashtra government today announced the much anticipated relief package of 11500 crore rupees for emergency relief repairs and long term rehabilitation measures for victims of the recent devastating floods which hit several districts last month the chief minister Uddhav Thakre also directed to appoint a committee of experts and administrators under the chairmanship of the chief secretary to prepare a report on the occurrence of landslides within 3 months Incessant rains have affected normal life in eastern districts of Rajasthan, Baran, Savai, Madhopur, Karoli, Kota, Jhalawad, Jaipur, Dosa and Bundi districts of the state have received heavy to very heavy rainfall in the last 24 hours. Now let us take a look at the weather forecast for tomorrow. National capital Delhi is likely to experience a generally cloudy sky with light rain. Temperature will hover between 26 and 33 degrees. Mumbai will have a generally cloudy sky with moderate rain. Chennai expected to have a generally cloudy sky with light rain. Kolkata will have a generally cloudy sky with a few spells of rain or thunder showers. Srinagar will experience a partly cloudy sky with possibility of rain or thunderstorm or dust storm. Jammu will have a partly cloudy sky with possibility of rain, thunderstorm or dust storm. Leh is expected to have a partly cloudy sky. Gilgit will have a partly cloudy sky too. Muzaffarabad will experience thunderstorms. And now to end the bulletin, here are the headlines once again. Both houses of parliament adjourned for the day following protest by opposition over Pegasus, snooping, farm laws and other issues. Government says... Number of farmers benefited by government procurement at MSP rises over 2 crore in 2020-21 center to implement deportion mission at a total budget of 4077 crore rupees for 5 years more than 47 crore 85 lakh covid-19 vaccine doses administered so far under nationwide vaccination drive national recovery rate stands at 97.38% Uttar Pradesh creates record by administering more than 22 lakh doses of COVID-19 vaccine in single day. Road Transport Minister Nitin Gadkari calls for quick rollout of flex fuel vehicles capable of running on 100% ethanol and gasoline in automobile sector. Delhi High Court dismisses petition to stop use of electronic voting machines. And with that we end the evening news. Good night. <laughs>